Hey mamas, welcome back to part two of tips for preventing a repeat perennial tear. If you missed the first video, pause this one and follow this link right up here to watch part one first so you get tips one through five for avoiding a repeat perennial tear. But if you've already seen it, let's hop into tips six through 10. The sixth thing to prevent perennial tearing is to eat well. And I know that it sounds unrelated, but food is either your medicine or your poison. And eating foods that are rich in healthy fats like avocados, oily fish, coconut oil, nuts, and seeds are going to help with skin elasticity or stretchiness, which is so important when it comes to having a baby. And then making sure you're eating foods rich in collagen like chicken, beef, fish, citrus fruits, berries, and others that you can look up on your own is also going to help with healthy skin and muscle as you recover from birth or prepare for another birth. I recommend also incorporating a collagen supplement into your daily routine, and I love Vital Protein Collagen, which is linked down below. Now, collagen only works if you have enough vitamin C. Research actually shows that women who took supplemental vitamin C after birth had a better and faster recovery and minimized raised scar formation, which is really valuable when you're trying to avoid a tear since scar tissue is not going to be as supple and elastic as normal skin tissue. So eat lots of colorful fruits and vegetables to make sure you're getting enough vitamin C and you can even take a supplement since it's hard to overdose on vitamin C. And if you do, the risk is that you'll have diarrhea, which is pretty easy to fix. You'll just back off taking that amount that you're taking. So I linked a vitamin C supplement down below, but it's always a good idea for you to check in with your doctor before taking anything. The seventh thing is to do a perennial massage. With tearing, the scar tissue around the area can become tight and can attach to the skin or muscle layers below, which can cause discomfort. So when you massage the perennial area, you can actually help reduce the scar tissue and the discomfort. So to do this massage, you're going to take two fingers, and if this is your vagina and this is your anus, here's your perineum, and depending on where your scar tissue is, you're going to take your two fingers and you're going to stroke horizontally above the scar and then under the scar and then in circles around the scar and then lengthwise across the scar doing each massage for two to three minutes. And this helps desensitize and break up the scar tissue. When you're ready, you can perform the perennial massage, which I explain about in this video linked up here. Applying a warm compress to the perineum before doing any of these massages or being in a warm bath or shower helps bring even more relaxation. And then finally, use some kind of lubrication as you do the massage to help with relaxation and comfort because remember, the goal is to relax and promote elasticity in the muscle and skin of that area. I recommend vitamin E oil or coconut oil, both of which are linked down below. You can do this massage whether you're pregnant or not, but if you are pregnant, you'll want to start doing it at around 32 weeks if you've had a third or fourth degree tear that you're hoping to avoid. Number eight is to try to orgasm often. And I know it might sound silly, but orgasms actually help tone the pelvic floor and increase blood flow for perennial healing. Now with third or fourth degree tears, it's not uncommon for penetrative sex to be uncomfortable, painful, or even impossible. So don't jump into this tip right away. Work with a pelvic floor therapist to help with rehabilitation and try to find other ways besides penetrative intercourse to achieve an orgasm. Number nine is to ask your care provider to provide support during birth by either applying counter pressure on the perineum as baby is being born or by applying a warm compress during the pushing stage or both of those things. One study showed that women who had warm compresses applied to the perineum during birth experienced fewer third or fourth degree tears. And lastly, make sure your birth team is aware of your goals, educated on how to help you achieve them as best as possible and ready to advocate for you in your birth space. For example, your goal is to avoid a repeat third or fourth degree tear. So to help you achieve that, one thing your team should know is how to coach you to breathe during your surges and remind you of positions to give birth in. Now, if a care provider tells mama to flip over on her back or hold her breath as she pushes without a medical indication for it, then your birth team should be ready to remind mama that she has a choice and authority over her birth. 
And birth team, you can just kindly say she really likes this position right now. Is there something wrong with this or a reason why she would need to flip over? And then that opens the door for true consent or refusal. So team, be ready to step in and advocate for mama to achieve her goals. So those are my tips for mamas who have experienced a third or fourth degree tear and are hoping to avoid another one. It can be traumatic to experience a tear like that during birth, so it's important that you find emotional and mental healing as well as physical healing. Going over your birth experience and uncovering how you feel about the big events, finding answers to your questions, and learning about the unknowns are all ways to help heal from traumatic births. And then make sure, mamas, you see a pelvic floor therapist. I can't stress that enough when it comes to perennial or pelvic floor healing. It might seem overrated, but it's not, and it is crucial for you to find a great one and do some shopping around until you do. And then lastly, knowledge is power. So check out the Built to Birth course, part one about birth and part two about postpartum and a lot about pelvic floor health. That's in the description below. So thanks for being with me in this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye mamas.